On September 20th, 2021, Canada holds its federal election to elect the 44th Parliament, after Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party felt that time was right to go for a majority government. Personal story time. In 2010, I moved to the United Kingdom to start my teaching career. The UK and Canada have very similar systems of government, where people elect members of parliament or MPs to represent them, and the party with the most elected leaders typically forms government and their leader becomes prime minister. Unlike presidential elections, in places like the United States or France, we don't directly elect our heads of government. Now, being as into politics as I am, I quickly learned after moving to the UK that they just elected a coalition government after the Conservative Party, led by David Cameron, yes, the same David Cameron who propelled the UK into the Brexit referendum in 2016, believing he could convince people of the UK that leaving the European Union was the worst choice. Spoiler alert, he didn't. But in 2010, his party failed to win a majority of seats in the British House of Commons, leading to what they call in the UK a hung parliament. Because you need more than half of the seats in the House of Commons to be able to have confidence of the House and form government and pass policies. So to form government, he came into a formal coalition agreement with the Liberal Democratic Party, a left-wing party, or as they're more commonly known, the Lib Dems, led by Nick Clegg. Now, during this current election in Canada, I've come to reflect on this wild time in British politics that I experienced while living there to draw some parallels to what's going on in the Canadian election today. <laughs> So, here we are in the middle of the Canadian election in 2021. An election that many have felt was unnecessary because despite being in a minority situation, Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party have been able to accomplish most of their policy objectives in the middle of a pandemic, no less, with support of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP to retain confidence in the House. Many believe this arrangement could continue for many months, if not years to come. But Justin Trudeau's Liberals' polling numbers were looking good, and he felt like he could turn these numbers into a majority government. And if we look at these numbers in the middle of August, well, maybe he was onto something. Now, however, the polls look like this. If these numbers hold, we might be looking at a conservative minority government under the leadership of Aaron O'Toole. Now, for those new to Canadian politics, we've got one major centre-right party, the Conservatives, again in this case, led by Aaron O'Toole, occupying that centre to centre-left-ish of the spectrum. We've got the Liberal Party under Justin Trudeau, and then a little bit further left of them, we've got Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. At the same time, we also have the Green Party, led by Anami Paul, who, as you might expect of a Green Party, have an environmentalist agenda. And then we also have a major regional party, the Bloc Québécois, who only run candidates in Quebec, but are generally relatively successful there, running on sort of like a Quebec nationalist, sovereigntist platform. And now they seek more autonomy for Quebec to make its own policies within a united Canada. Now, if we are to revisit these polling numbers, we might be looking at a situation where the Conservatives win the most seats in the House of Commons, but in a minority situation. So where will they draw the remaining number of votes from MPs of other parties in order to gain the confidence of the House, which in our case is over half of the 338 total members of Parliament, which boils down to needing 170 votes to govern. Depending on what happens in Quebec, this could very well come from the Bloc Québécois, who in past conservative minority governments were that balance of power that allowed the conservatives to pass their policy objectives with support of the Bloc. This year, however, it doesn't look, based on the polling anyway, that the bloc is going to be as much of a factor and might not elect enough MPs in order to be that support that the Conservatives might need to form government. So that means the Conservatives might have to rely on either the Liberals or the NDP in order 
to gain confidence of the house in that minority situation. As we've looked at where these parties stand ideologically, that might be a tricky thing, where both the Liberals and NDP kind of occupy that more left-wing side of the Canadian political spectrum, whereas the Conservatives are on the right. Which brings me back to my story from 2010, because that's exactly where the Conservatives under David Cameron found themselves after that election in Great Britain. Right? So an alternative for the Conservatives might be to potentially enter into a formal coalition with one of these two other Canadian parties. And if we were to totally mirror what happened in Great Britain, it would almost be like the Conservatives entering this coalition with the NDP. Now, what does a formal coalition mean? It means that, unlike a situation where you have a minority government and another party supports that minority government with their votes in a formal coalition, that smaller party might actually have a more prominent role in forming government. So for example, if we look at David Cameron's cabinet from 2010, you will notice that Nick Clegg, the leader of the Lib Dems, was deputy prime minister, but also other important cabinet posts were filled by other Lib Dems. Now, because the Conservatives were the majority party in this coalition, you will find more conservative cabinet ministers, but the Lib Dems had a few as well, including some important ones like the Ministry of the Environment and so on. And this really gave the Lib Dems a seat at the table in terms of policy in the United Kingdom. What's especially interesting about this is that this coalition government, if we look at the number of people who voted for the Conservatives and the Lib Dems in the UK, if you combine those numbers, this government that was created by this coalition actually represented, in a way, more than half of the UK's voters. So, in a way, it was actually more democratic than having one party elected and having total control and a majority government that could often be elected with anywhere from mid-30% to 40% support of the people of Canada or the UK. What was also remarkable about this Cameron Clegg coalition was that it was quite stable. In Canada, we're used to minority governments lasting from two to two and a half years or so, but in this case, the Cameron Clegg coalition lasted the full five years of their mandate, being able to pass some pretty significant policies as time went by. Now, in a different and even potentially more interesting scenario, even if the Conservatives win more seats than any other party, the Liberals might still have a shot to form government if they manage to broker a deal with support of, again, the NDP. Potentially, with the way we're seeing polling shake out here, we could have a situation where the Liberals and NDP combined might be able to get over that 170, even if the Conservatives have more seats than either party. Crazy, right? And the Liberals could continue to form government. And so even if the Conservatives quote unquote win the election, they might not be the governing party. Which is interesting because it might have to force us to redefine or rethink how we understand winning an election. Because again, if the Liberals and the NDP happen to form a coalition representing more than 50% of voters in Canada, did that coalition government not in fact win the election? Like again, we saw with the Cameron Clegg coalition in the United Kingdom, even if this government is made up of more than one political party. Now, in Canadian history, we've never had a formal coalition government. In our case, Minority governments have typically been these informal arrangements where you had one or more parties support the governing party with votes and getting a little bit of compromise in their direction in laws and policies as a result. Increasingly, however, Canada has seen more and more minority governments. And there's little evidence that this trend is going to change as Canadians, it seems, are becoming more polarized. Of course, and in part because as is tradition here in Canada, the party that does win the most seats in a minority situation will end up governing in some way or another with support of one of the other parties without the need of a formal coalition. And if we are to revisit the British experience here, after the formal coalition agreement, the Lib Dems and Nick Clegg's 
popularity plummeted. Working with the conservatives was a huge hit to their support base and in the following election in 2015, their results were abysmal. So it would be tricky to see whether either the Liberals or the NDP would be willing to take that on and be seen as working with the Conservatives to the potential hit that might result to their own popularity. Working with the enemy, as it were. Which to me seems like a little bit of a problem in and of itself, because once we start seeing our political opponents as enemies, while well, it makes it that much harder to actually work together in a positive way to get stuff done, which at the end of the day is what I would like to see in government. But that could be a topic for an entirely different video. This recent Canadian experience with minority governments where other parties simply support the governing party with their votes, well, maybe that's not the only possibility and not the only option. Many other countries that use electoral systems that are different from what we have here in Canada or the UK, our electoral system first past the post has traditionally led to more majority governments, but again, we're seeing that change a little bit. A lot of other countries use different electoral methods that tend to lead to more minority governments and so therefore more coalition governments as that kind of becomes the political norm in those places. And also these polling numbers could totally change in a few days, making all of this an entirely moot point because yay elections. Do you think a formal coalition in Canada could be possible? Let us know in the comments below. And if you learned something today, give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you again next time.